All right, Jamie, my name's Dave, or DMAC. Mickey's behind the camera, so if I call you Mickey, don't take any offence to it. We're going to do the awning first, so that it's something that you can remember, and we'll probably cut it into a shorter video. Makes you look good when you get somewhere. Loosen off this thumb screw with the same hand, squeeze it together gently, and push that out the way. Grab your hook. Do exactly the same down this end. So loosen that, and spin it out the way. With your stick, flick that little silver switch down, and then grab the black loop. Step back as far as you can, and pull you on again. With your stick, so I can untangle myself, pull these arms up, and they lock over this grey slider. That's when you do that up. Do the same down this end. And if you've got help, you can imagine how quickly this has happened. The handle's got the locking pin in it. Crack the handle, slide it out, lock it back in. Easy peasy. Do the same on the other side, make it nice and even. Once you've gotten used to the heights you like, just mark it with a texture so it's easy. You can shift the leg out and stand it up. It's just a matter of releasing that and standing up. If you do that a lot, you'll have another height marked so that you're nice and even. If you get walls later on, shade cloth walls can hang off of this. Uh, canvas walls, they'll put a saddle in and a hole and a bar will grab onto that. But the long wall just slides into the track here anyway, so it's super easy. If it's going to be windy, pack it up. Loosen that off, bring it down to height, with your finger, push that little grey button. Much better to push it than pull it. Slide that down out of the way. Do the same down on this end and slide that out of the way. Now the trick with it is to locate your strap. You don't want it moving around. Stand on it with your left foot, a little bit of tension. When you lean over, there's no pressure in that switch because now it's got all the tension trying to wind up. As it goes up, if you're a shorty, you'll need the hook to pop it away, lock it in, do it up. Lock it back in, do it up. Don't lose your hook. Leave that switch up because it's still trying to wind up. You can put Velcro or cat's collars around this just as a safety, so it's not going to rattle anywhere. If you can remember how to do that, you look really good when you pull up somewhere, off your car, awning out, table chairs, drinks, everyone's happy. Now we'll talk about the rest of the outside of your van. So when you get it off your car, and we'll show you the DA35 pin, I'll show you where I've stashed that, make sure you whack your handbrake on. This cord will be attached to your vehicle somewhere because if this pin pulls out, your electric brakes come on full lock. So if it disconnects from your car, it's not going to go into that lane or in the paddock, it stops on the road where it's meant to. Your wiring, hopefully you've been sent this already, that's for your ESC. That'll light up when you plug into your car. Red can only plug into red. The grey one charges your battery, which you'll need to keep your battery charged up as you drive. And the 12 pin is the little pins on a Lotus that do some work. You can change this to a flat or a round if you need to, because it's only the normal indicators and electric brakes that are going to function. But I'll give you a 12 just in case. Jockey wheel, take it off for travel. Make sure when you get this off the truck that your jockey wheel's there somewhere, because the truck you normally stashes it somewhere so it doesn't disappear. Your gas bottles, they're both full. I filled them up just a little while ago. I'm using that one so I've got the lever that way. Don't do that, because you'll get out the car one day and open this one. Then you'll get out the car the next day and open that one. Leave it on the one that you're using, because it's open. Your diesel tank for your diesel heater that we just had fitted, top it up with nice fresh diesel. There won't be a great deal in there, but it'll have something in it. Outside tap, make sure it's off. You don't want it to crack loose when you don't expect it to, because you'll lose all your water. Now. You've got a lot of keys, it looks like, but there's four for your toolbox and they're all the same, so you need one. 
It's a nice big toolbox. There's no slides or anything in it. That's something you can add on if you need to. But as we go around, I'm going to lock stuff because, of course, this is going on transport. And then I'll show you where I stash your keys. Your 240 volt cord in, it's a 15 amp cord. Make sure you've got one of them. Caravan parks are all good for it. Your circuit breakers on the outside, it's just where they think it has to be. The keys for any of these locks are all the same. So in the bag that your keys are going to end up in, which I've lost already, it looks like there's lots and lots of keys, but you only need one to do all of these latches. 90 degrees opens it up. You do have lights up in your boot so you can see what you're doing. You've also got your jack. Get familiar with it. It's a trailer mate style jack. You can use it on the front if you like. Get it out of the box so you know where it goes. But like I say, as we go around, I'm locking up, which is just because it's going on transport. That jack, if you need to use it, there's a bracket with it, locks onto that. So always do it behind the wheels. Now up the top there, you'll see your TV antenna. And you've also got an external TV in port. So if you're in a high or somewhere far away, hopefully, that you can't get reception out of that, you can hook up to another tower or a satellite dish, things like that. And we'll talk more about that on the inside. Your water tanks. We've filled them up to pressure test everything. And they've got separate keys. Again, they're both the same number, so you don't need four of them, even though we've labeled them tank one and tank two. You don't need to. I'll go around before it goes on the truck and put 50 psi on all your tyres, and I'll check all your wheel nuts at 120 newton metres. Yeah. Your hot water service is up in here. You don't need to do anything to it unless you want to physically drain your water supply. In which case, undo the big one, undo the little black ones, take the panel off, and you'll see there's a drain plug. It's a stainless steel tank, so there's no anode to worry about anymore. Outside shower, hot and cold. Glorious if you've been down the beach or you want to wash the dog, make sure it's off. Otherwise, you'll get a waterfall out here when you turn your pumps and things on. That's a different key though, different cupboard. This is the fun bit that nobody wants to talk about. Your toot. Now, your toot is fairly easy, let's be honest. Little green lever up, brings your cassette out. Now, to empty it, come around the post, unscrew that, push the little green button at the back here to release air, tip it out. Now we've got water in here, so I'm gonna get rid of it because you don't need extra water in there. That's all you'll do when it's not just water, not on the ground, of course, into the black water or into somebody's toilet at the caravan park. Screw it back up, get ready to slide it in. You do have a travel handle, so you can drag it through the park if you need to. If you can't see that handle on the inside, you can't open your toilet, so nobody can make a mess in your loo. When it slides in, make sure you hear it go click. And use the chemicals. You need to use the chemicals to break everything down, otherwise you've got a bit of a mess in there. So that's this side all locked up. That's effectively your utility side of the van. You've got your tank fillers, and underneath here, I don't know if Mickey can get down that far, you can split which tank you want to use. So they're both open. I can shut it. So now I'm only using the front tank. This is your mains pressure in. So if you're at a caravan park and you want to run off their water, hook the hose in. And your grey water comes out of this little red one down the back, uh, 50 litre tank down the back. And if I shut that off, we're not going to make a puddle. I don't want to have to send you more water than you need, so we'll leave it open for our tests. So effectively, when you get somewhere, that's what you got to play with first. And then whip your awning out and have a beer. Your tyre, I'll check the pressure on that. You got your jerry cans and your reverse camera. So make sure you get that installed on your car. It makes life a lot easier. Now, we do have an outside table. We do have an outside table. But it's got a little whiskey light in it. So if you've got your bottles stacked out there, you can see what's in them. They're rated to about 20, 25 kilos. So it's perfect for an electric fry pan or a kettle. Just watch the steam get in there. 
but it's not designed as a seat. Make sure you turn the light off. Your entertainment cupboard. You can bring your TV out and slot it into the bracket and watch the footy outside. Wine guard is your rooftop antenna. That one is if you are on the external antenna input. You've got USB power, charge your phone. You've got a 12 volt socket to plug your TV into. That's what we like about them. You've also got stereo controls outside. Now I've already got your stereo running inside, but I can adjust the volume and change the radio station from outside. If I tap the button, I can dial it to outside and then turn it up to block out that truck back up. If I dial it to the inside, I can get whoever's inside sleeping out of bed. Or I can tap it to both. And adjust the volume everywhere. You can also change your inputs if you've got other things plugged in. You've got your Bluetooth synced up, you've got your stick in there. You do all of that from inside. If I turn it off from out here, it turns your entire stereo off. So just be aware of that if you're trying to wake people up or not. Now we're back to this front side of the boot, which is where we got your awning hook out from. You get a stabiliser arm handle, I'll show you where that goes. Your wheel brace, spare hub cap. So, under here are your stabiliser legs. If we take the weight, pull the handle, they drop down, vertical is best, then that bar drops onto that 19mm socket, you can wind it down. It's there to stabilise, not jack up. So if you're jacking up, use your jack to change your wheel. Make sure you pack them up for travel. You don't want to have them dragging down the ground. You got your bayonet fitting for your gas bottle here, which is nice and sticky. Oh, pop him out, you can hook your barbecue straight up. You don't have to shift gas bottles around. Keep the cap though, because you don't want it to get dirty and dusty. You're on the side of the toolbox which is a good place to stash your barbecue because then if it's a bit greasy, it doesn't matter. But you'll work out what you want to stash where, but that's up to you. Now all of a sudden we're back to the front again, we're ready to hook up and drive off. Um, handles, use them for pushing or pulling, that's why they're there. Light switches for the outside, we'll show you on the inside, they're all up there by the door. And the little black one is your radio antenna. That's pretty much the outside of your van. Obviously, get underneath, have a look at bits and pieces, make sure you're familiar with everything's nice and tight. But now we're going to jump inside and have a look. Little lights, double click. Because the first one's a little blue one back there, which you probably can't see. But at least you can find your way in. Use your door keys, and we've labelled them up, to lock or unlock. That's locked. The handle's flat. That's unlocked. You can give it a flick. Don't force that around, you'll break it. Handle up on the inside is how you split your doors so you can lock that when it's a nice hot night. The metal loop then just clips on over there. Easy peasy. Give your door a squeeze if you've had it shut. They had it open rather so it stays together. And the wheel is designed to stop the awning stripping on it, but there's no wheel on the inside door, so be cautious of that. Now we'll jump inside and we'll have some fun in there. All right. Jamie, we're now gonna play with the inside. The white switch will turn off all of your 12 volt power in your caravan, so nothing's gonna work. Your fridge will stay working because it's got a switch over there that controls it. The switches above it are your outside lights that can be orange or white. The other switches, some do inside. The top one, uh, the middle one rather, does your big light on the outside. So have a play with them and get familiar with which light switches are doing which. Your aircon remote we're going to come back to. We're aiming for that cupboard though. Because when you jump inside, this is where you're going to. And all we've got up here is your solar controller. So it registers that you're getting solar power in and you can keep an eye on your battery voltage. Your water tank gauges. We're half full to three quarters. That one's going to flick around. I don't know if you want me to drain them off before it gets picked up on transport. So I'll leave them in with water. You can turn that screen off if you feel the need, but what's the point? Your 12 volt fuses 
they pop out if something's overloaded and then you just push them in to reset them so you don't have to carry fuses anymore. These switches are all labeled so that you can turn stuff on or turn stuff off to save power. Aircon, it's an isolator, so it can't come on by accident if it's up. Your water pump, if you're using your tank water, pump switch down. If you're using hose water and you've already got pressure, leave it off. Your fridge control, if you turn that off, your fridge turns off. Your fridge runs on 12 volt only, so you wanna make sure it's working. Your hot water service, you've actually got three switches for it. This turns it off completely, and then you've got switches to turn it on. That one, is your electric switch. That one is your gas switch. I've now turned them both on because I wanted to catch up in a hurry. If you see a red light, you've got a problem. What we'd like you to do when you get in your van is if you're at a caravan park, for example, that tells me you're plugged into 240 volt power because it won't light up if you're not. If you've opened your gas bottle and you know you've got gas, fine. What we want you to do is run your tap. You'll get rid of all of that air if you've been bouncing down the road because it's all in your plumbing, and then you'll get water coming out. You want to make sure you've got water in your van, because if you've popped a hose somehow on travel or you've hooked up to the caravan park, you may not have turned the tap on. You may have a knot in your hose. It may take a little while to catch up to us. Use it as an excuse to wash your hands. So wait for a bit. We haven't run this one for a while, so it's coughing and splutching more. Imagine you've washed up your hands now. Yep, we've got a good solid water flow that's when you turn on your hot water tank. So it's just a safety to make sure there's water in it in case you've let it sit outside in 40 degree days and it's evaporated away. Hot's to the left, cold's to the right, and you've also got filtered water, so it filters coming out of your tanks. Depending on where you're gonna travel, you might wanna filter the water coming into your tanks. The filter for that is stashed in up there. So again, depending on your trip, carry a spare. Now your fridge is probably the next most important part of your kit because you want to keep your beer cold. It's a 12 volt Thetford fridge. The little blue light just tells me that it's on. If I tap the cold sensor, it tells me that it's on maximum cold. It'll drop that display out once it realizes you've played it around and had a look at it. Turning on the night mode just turns the compressor off. So it thinks you're going to bed and you don't want to hear that little humming at night. I don't know if you'll ever use it. Open your fridge, you got a nice big freezer up the top. And if you were here in person, I'd get you to whack your hand in and realize how cold that is. You got all your trays for bits and pieces in there. You'll work out how to stash your veggies. In some book work, it'll tell you how it best thinks you should. There's a little blue tab here in the lock that when you're not using your fridge, it'll hold your door open. So again, get familiar with the little bits and pieces like that because it makes you look like a pro. To turn your fridge off is either off here or off there. If I turn it off here, there's no power going to your fridge and it's turned off. So you might as well just use that one when you go into storage than messing with that. Your cooker, it's all gas. Now I've only just filled your gas bottles up so this might take a little while to light. If you're trying to show off to your mates, run all this stuff before they get there. So it looks good when you go, look, here's my gas, it's, it's a beast. If the lid shuts down, it'll turn your gas off. So if you are gonna grill, you gotta pull this little plate out and have the lid up. The little plate just stops these getting hot. But it's easy to use, it's all gas. If you are cooking in here, run your range hood unless you like the smell of bacon, which, <laughs> who doesn't? Easy peasy. If you've got your car keys and a little cat, little set of keys, chuck them up here. So you're forced to get in there when you come in and you're forced to go in there when you get out. We'll shut them down now because we're having some fun in your van. Your telly. Oh God, the voice, at least it's not the Olympics. Get used to how you tune it in so that you can tune it in when you get to wherever you are. We've tuned it in for Adelaide. I don't even know where this is going. You'll have to tune it in when you get there. If you're going to put a DVD or change some inputs, change the inputs. You can't see them over there, but if you've got your HDMI's or your USBs plugged in, um, Lotus are of the belief that the people who buy their vans don't use DVDs or CDs anymore. Bluetooth it either into your stereo or into your telly. You're not meant to travel with it up there. So we're going to take it off. It runs on 12 volt, so it's easy to pull it off and unscrew your antenna cable. 
If you were hooking up to an outside source, you'd screw it into this one. So this is your rooftop one and it's got a little light to tell you that it's on up there. So screw it into that one, you've then got your antenna out. We're gonna stash that back in, back in its box, which is under your bed. You've also got your diesel heater on this side, so we'll play with that in a minute. And Lotus also give you a nice little baggie. Actually, oh, we're going to transport here, yeah, we'll put this in the box. Now you don't need to see me pop that back in there, so I'll come down and do that once we cut the video off. I'll just leave it there like that for now, but it will be in its box under there. Your diesel heater, just had it installed. The controllers for it are up on this side of the bed. Turn it on, hold the button in, dial it round to the temperature you want, it's gonna fire up. It's that easy, it really is. To turn it off again, Hold the button in. So now the red's telling me it's gonna try and light, but I don't want it to, I wanna turn it off. I don't wanna have the time on it. I've now turned it off. So read through the controls, you get a stack of them and all you're gonna get used to is tapping and turning a little bit. Now, whoever side of the bed this is has USBs and I'll leave one of them like that spun up so you can see how to get to it. Because ever the side of the bed is over here, which is where Mickey's at the moment, also has stereo controls. So you can do the same as outside from here to turn it on and adjust stuff from bed. The main stereo's up there, we'll play with him in a sec. Your windows, very easy. Up, down. Open all your tabs, push them out wherever you like, tighten them up. You can then still shut your night line or your fly screen. Make sure for travel, you shut them all. And there's no real right or wrong with these as to whether you travel with them up or down. Um, so it doesn't really matter, we'll just leave them as zero. Bedroom lights, if you're not in your bedroom, turn them off. That one turns on your bathroom lights so you don't trip over the dog going in and out of the bathroom in the middle of the night. Your TV antenna, once you've wound it up, you can pull this collar down and spin it around to fine tune and get a better picture. The thing to remember though, is when it's time to pack it down, line these two peaks up and then wind it down. The antenna's gonna lay down on your roof where it's meant to, there's a little cradle in there. Now it's flat, I know it's flat. Your microwave, let's be honest, it's a microwave. We don't want you to travel with that up in there. That one's all right. Because it's big and it's heavy. We're gonna stash it probably in the top drawer with some of your other bits and pieces. I'm gonna put it there for now to remind me I've got to talk about that. They're all nice and cool so I can shut the lid. Now we come into your bathroom. Nice big shower. And we've got your shower head already on the floor. I'm gonna wrap that up in a bit of um, protective stuff so it doesn't bounce around on the floor. What you wanna get used to is leaving the plug in the shower unless you're physically having a shower. Stops any smells from your grey tank, stops any potential flies coming in. You do have a roof hatch with light and fan in it. Make sure you spin it shut for travel. Your toot's the thing that everyone wants to know about. Open the lid, open this grey handle. That's access to your cassette. That's where you put your chemicals, that's where you put your waste. If you get what I mean. The middle button will flush as long as you hold it down and either out of your tanks or out of mains pressure. There's no separate filling tank to flush with. When you're done, shut it off. Follow the magic lights, because it'll tell you that the cassette's out. It's not sensing any flushing water. You're three quarters full or your chockers. So keep an eye on that. Your door, you do have pins so you can lock it shut. Don't. If you trip over coming out the shower, there's no way to get into this very tiny room if this door's locked shut. So just sling it shut and be done with it. If you're done in the bathroom, turn the lights off. You don't have to be wasting power in there again. Now as you pack your, ca your caravan, open all the cupboards so you know where you're putting stuff. That's where you find little things like the USBs for your stereo. So if all your music's on a USB, you can plug it straight into that. Your stereo is, if you tap down like that, Bluetooth ready, so you can do it on Bluetooth, USB audio. It's set up for a lot of stuff. 
uh, where am I going? Back to FM because we're on FM down here. Um, it does take a while to power up when you first power it up, so don't think it's not working, it's just going through its brain cycle. These funny little lights. The first tap's just a blue one. Bit of mood lighting, again, so you can get to the bathroom without tripping over the dog. Tap it again, you get your white reading light. Your table, there's a lever, which I can't find. On this side here on my right hand. Squeeze it up, lets your disc go around in any horizontal fashion you like. If I pull it all the way out and step on that black button, I can push it down and it will get to a locking point underneath your couch. So theoretically, you could turn this into another bed. You want to be friendly with your visitors. But get it out of the way when you're packing and unpacking. It just makes life a lot easier. Your aircon, point and shoot. 240 only, so you've got to be plugged in. Anything you can do with the remote, you can also do from the touch screen. So if you have taken the batteries out to feed your TV, you can still work your aircon by pushing the magic buttons. If I turn it off on this switch, it cuts the power to it. So we'll do that before we pack up as well. And we'll shut him down. For transit, I'm not gonna leave it up there. I'm gonna put it in the top drawer where you'll find that's gonna live. That's gonna live. All of your outside keys are in there. So everything's gonna be in these drawers. Speaking of drawers, I forgot something. Unlikely, says Mickey. Hmm. These drawers all have locks. So if I lock that one, I can't then open that drawer. So again, we're gonna lock them, but leave the keys in them for travel. So if you stop and hurry, the drawers aren't coming out. As you'll see, I'm pushing all the buttons shut as we go, because we make it out, we're packing up. Now, just shift him out of the way. This is all the stuff they give you for your diesel heater. And it's a two button thing, so I don't know why. You also get a DVD just in case. All of your other appliances all have books in here to tell you how to use stuff. So if I've been talking too fast or Mickey's wanting to put the volume on, you've got all your books. It does come in handy. Tuck all of that back in that folder. And that is going in the second drawer down here. What we've also got in your second drawer is your reverse camera and the cable for it. So get that installed on your car. Your DO35 pin, get that installed. You can't tow off without it. And your diesel heater people we've got to use gave you a couple of stubby holes. So all of that stuff is in that drawer. So when you're looking for it, when you get you pick up your van, you know where it is because it's all going to be in there. Anything you're looking for is going to be in those drawers. The driver will have your door keys, but everything else is locked. So when you get there, make sure you get your keys and your jockey wheel, then get in and have a look in those cupboards. Roof hatch, split it apart, move the little tabs like you do your windows, pull the handle down, push it up. Once it's up, you can still shut the fly screen or the night line, or you can lock it in through some tabs here or you can lock it just open. For transit, shut them and shut them. Lock it up. You can shut that one if you're worried about it. More lights. You got a positive pressure hatch. If I push that up, as you're driving down the bitumen, the fresh bitumen air will fill up your van. So theoretically, when you hit the dirt road, the dirt can't get in because the pressure in here is greater than outside. If you know how to use it, it'll work well. Where you will get dust in though, if you're not using it, is in here and in the bottom of your door because it's a gas safety. You've got to have it so fresh air will come in and push the gas out the bottom of your door. If we're packing up for normal travel, you would come back into your cupboard to get your keys. You turn off your air conditioner, you turn off your hot water service, you turn off your pump. For normal travel, you'll leave the fridge on. For your travel, I'm turning your fridge off which if I now look back here, the little blue light's gone, so it's a good indicator. What we also do in your case, and you can just do it on a normal basis, you turn the white one off, all your 12 volt power turns off. And that's how you want to travel. So make sure you go through some pack up lists. But let's get some light back here. What we're also going to put in your top drawer is some more paperwork. We've got these two sheets. This one tells us the wiring you need. So that's why I know you can change it to anything because there's just the normal stuff in there. 
It also tells you where a few bits and pieces are actually located, like your batteries in charger, for example, or under your couch. This tells us what's in your caravan right now. So external speakers, camera kit, um, the size of your tires, the fact there's no washing machine, things like that. As you pack your caravan, write a list of everything you put in here, include on it your key numbers. Send all three pages to your insurer so you're physically covering your traveling contents. If you lose your door keys, I can get some recut or you can go straight to Camac and get them recut because you know the number. A little service schedule reminder, just about when you're supposed to get them checked over and stuff. A physical check sheet of what to do when you get there and what to do when you leave. Leaving's longer, unplug your cord, wind up your legs, put the TV antenna down. Getting there's easy. Get your awning out, crack a beer. If you can't remember stuff, ring us up. All of that stuff is gonna be stashed in the drawer. There's also your warranty card. The girls, when we send you the video, uh, probably emailed this to you to fill out and send back so we commence your warranty. Try and remember to do that. Otherwise the girls get grumpy. You know what grumpy girls are like. So, so far, everything's getting locked in there. All your panels are shut. This is when I ask you for questions. No, we don't have any questions. In that case, we're done. Thank you very much. I think we're done, Mickey. I'm hoping everything else is done. Yep, 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 we're done. Spare set of bearings and seals. Good, I don't know where they are. You're not taping still, are you? Yeah, why?